Okay, so let's take a look at number six here in that same unit. Um, and what we have is another normal distribution problem. Um, but now instead of just giving us one percentage or one uh, area of probability, um, we're given two values. So we need to sort of just draw the question out to so figure out what we're looking at here. So again, uh, we'll draw an axis here and then we will put in a normal distribution curve. Okay. And we will mark off the middle of the curve and that is going to be the mean height. So that is 25 centimeters. And we know the standard deviation sigma is 1.35. Now it says here, on average, 7% of the seedlings are too short and 5% are too tall. So in and amongst this curve, um, the first 7% of the seedlings are, are too short. So the number, they are going to be less than the mean. And then 5% at the very end are too tall. So if you remember what that is, this is going to be the probability for the area under the curve. So the first 7% is right here. Okay, so we'll just mark that in. This is the 7% range. And then the last 5%, so that is going to be even just about the same amount, but just a little bit less. This is the last 5%, okay, are too tall. So what we have to find here are the two boundary points. So what is the sort of the smallest height that gets us out of the 7% range? Okay, so that's going to be x1. And then what is the, the last boundary point here that is just under the 5% so that the tree isn't too tall? We can call that x2. Okay, so we need to calculate what those um, values are. So again, we can do this. Um, what we need to do is use a function, the inverse norm function, so that we, once we are given the area or the probability, the 7% probability, um, and then we have the 5% probability here, we are able to calculate what the two areas are. So let's look, at, let's look at the first boundary here, x1. So let's do here, find x1. So to do that, we can just use the inverse norm function, okay? And we plug in our values or our parameters. So on your TI calculator, you'll uh, find the inverse norm, and we are gonna type in 0.7. Okay, for 7% of the um, trees. And we also know that the mean is 25 and then the standard deviation is 1.35. So right away, this is going to give us a value that we can figure out um, right away in terms of what the, the tree value is. That will give us point X1. And if we plug that in and you take out your calculation, you should find that this is approximately 23 or 23 centimeters. So that's X1. Okay, so that's the lower limit. 7% um, of the trees are below 25 or 23 centimeters. Okay, so the next thing we have to do here is find X2. Now, the only thing you really have to watch here is that how do you calculate that 5% area? Okay, so this is the, the thing that we have to watch when you are looking at this problem here. Okay, so 5% at the end, at the end, um, means that we are from the zero point, because remember probability goes starts at zero on the left and goes out to 100 over here, right? So it's 100 here and then it starts at zero over here, means that 95% of the trees are fine up to point x2. Okay, so in the inverse norm function, we aren't going to use the 5% value because that's the part on the right. We always have to measure from the left. So that means 95% of the trees are fine to use at this point. So it's 0 0.95. We know our mean is 25 and we know our standard deviation is 1.35. And when we work out that calculation, you'll find that the range of trees is 27.2 centimeters. Okay, so putting this all together, okay, so all the trees that are um, uh, too short are, be are below 23 and the trees that are too far that are above 27 and a half. So um, all trees, OK, 
okay, between 23 centimeters and 27.2 centimeters represents essentially um, the middle chunk of the curve. Okay, so how much it represents, um, there's seven on the left and five there, so that's 12. So we take away the two edges, it represents 88% of all trees. Okay, so that's one way to express how, the, how this question is. But we were just asked to find the boundary points, X1 and X2. Okay, and so that's the quickest way that I would use um, to do that, is just in one step. Now, if you wanted to, you could do what we did uh, in the previous question, is don't put in the mean and the standard deviation. Just calculate the Z-score from the inverse normal function and then use the Z-score formula to um, calculate the, the data point, the boundary point based on the mean and the deviation. All right, but this way is easier and since you are allowed to use a graphing calculator or this function, um, I would just go through and do it in one step.